Welcome everybody to the February wrap up podcast for the Idol Master subs. We are back here after a month of January. We had the first wrap up podcast last January where we tackled quite a bit of news. February, not as much news and uh, well, not as much positive news either. There is some news to talk about uh, on the good side, on the bad side, but this isn't going to be as, uh, how could I say, it? as momentous as the last one, but we're going to have to soldier on, and uh, we'll have to push through with everything, both the good and the bad. Uh, I'm here with my regular two co-hosts, Metal P and Cho. How you guys doing? Morning. Doing well. Okay, so uh, this is where we usually do the intro, and since everyone knows what the wrap-up podcast is, I'm going to drop straight in. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to leave you guys any, uh, any relaxing time. I'm not going to leave you guys with any time to warm up or... Get ready. I'm going to hit you guys straight up. Yeah. Good lord. Rough, rugged, and roll. We're going right in. We're going right in. We're going to go uh, ham from the start. So, <clears throat> I like to end off things with the good news, right? So, I'll always start with the bad news. And I'll always end with the good news. So, that we, we leave with, you know, uh, uh, a positive note. So, that means I'm going to have course. to start our February wrap-up. Podcast. Though, though I, wa- I want to say... Just um, before we get to the actual bad news, I kind of want to bring up what we've been alluding to all of last month, and that's the fact that, hilariously, around the beginning of the very, very end of January, back when we were recording the first podcast, there was a Twitter trend that was going around about Riamu apparently getting Twitter canceled. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know anything about that Twitter canceling stuff because I'm way too old for that. So if you okay, guys know what that's so, about. So, so for context, um, there was a hashtag going around saying hashtag Riyamu is over party. And it was a bunch of people on Twitter, whether or not it was joking, essentially just canceling Riyamu. Keep in mind, Riyamu is a fictional character, but people were canceling the fuck out of her because, and I kid you not, she what she said lolly is justice in an official commu and some people got so mad that they tried to cancel her i'm not that's it that's not, that's the tweet i'm not <laughs> one to like integrate you know like real life events into the game because that kind of like that kind of makes things a little um uh, off balance it kind of ruins the sort of like moment uh what would i say the continuum of what is intended by namco and what's not intended by namco not intended by the fans and stuff so uh, to me i mean specifically because the 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 character she was talking to was my favorite cg kid which was yukimi i I don't know i mean isn't that what her character is supposed to be so i'm like yeah exactly like, 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 even if it's like annoying and stupid, it's on brand for Riyamu. So I, like, if 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 you were someone that was like super unironic about that hashtag, first off, uh, rethink your life decisions. I'm sorry, but you really do need to sit down and think. But also, if you were someone that was unironically supporting it, congratulations, you're the very thing that Riyamu was satirizing in the first place. So that, yeah, it's not something I really have a strong opinion about. I'd rather just, you know, let it be because there's a lot more things to, to worry about. Like, Yeah, of course. Of, of, of course. This it's is just something like really dumb, silly, and stupid that I wanted to bring up before we get to the actual, like, heavy stuff because a lot of this podcast is going to be a little depressing. So at the very least, we want to start it off with something that was at least kind of humorous. Yeah, something to laugh at before we like uh, get our hopes crushed because this before is we all be exactly sad. what you think about a hope crushing um, um topic. Um, so let me drop on some yeah, context. Yeah, because me. speaking of Riyamu, this next bit of news is sick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I'd like to wait. laugh. <laughs> I'd like to laugh, but I just cry instead. So let me just um, drop some context onto you. <clears throat> Uh, last week, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, that's his name, right? Shinzo Abe? Yes. yes. Last week, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has declared a nationwide event cancellation of 
anything related to like public events, concerts, meetups, stuff like card game tournaments, uh, outdoor yes. activities, and, and, and also like- in addition, um, schools, Japanese schools, as of this week, actually, they're going to be closed for the next month because of this. So generally, this lockdown has resulted into a a large amount of, well, not exactly a large amount. It's actually more like a gigantic majority of events being completely canceled. Some countries have actually just went ahead and went with their events, but didn't allow an audience. They just allowed the players but, to play because that's their job. Um, by the way, um, this is this is because of the spreading of the coronavirus. This is the uh, due to the spread of the COVID, uh, CV. Whatever its name is, uh, COVID nineteen. There we go. I was on the right track. I just didn't think I was getting it right, but COVID uh, ID nineteen, which is uh, sp- spreading quite fast in the Asia region, and Japan is of course in the Asia region. So of course they're taking everything they can to make sure that nothing really happens because um, concerts have lots of people in it, tournaments have lots of people in it, and you know sanitary measures is a thing they have to take care of and these gigantic companies don't want to like you know they want to make sure that they're representing human rights properly they don't want to continue their events and look like they're evil people because they just want to get more money in in risking the lives and dangers of people who are involved in these events and this is not just like the performers this is like the people who go the staff uh health matters so Yes. Um, in in addition, like this, this also affects um different worldwide events because if you if you've been following the Street Fighter Five competitive community, Capcom just said that NorCal Regionals is not going to be an official Capcom Pro Tour tournament anymore because of the coronavirus outbreak. Uh, same thing with Tekken, but uh, considering this, yes. is, uh, uh, this is an Idol Master co- uh, podcast, I'm going to keep things mostly Idol Master related. So as of of, now, of, of, of course, yeah. just wanted to like bring it up because this is like even though this is mostly an Asian epidemic, there are like international events that are also yeah. affected, like that Capcom Pro Tour tournament, or even um, a big one was um, GDC, the Game Developers Conference yeah, 2020, GDC. that had to get delayed because everyone was canceling. So uh, at this point, the Idol Master events that have been confirmed to be canceled were the 765 Pros All Stars uh, uh, Mixed Reality Stage, the 315 Production Side and Producer Meeting, uh, the Million Live Cruise that was supposed to happen last February 28th, 29th, I believe, and mm-hmm. uh, I think there was a Moto Dereste Night party that was supposed to be scheduled for this week, but they went ahead and canceled that one too. So while they currently are like canceling and seeing if they can if they can like see if they can reschedule everything uh they're currently in the process of refunding all the producers who have signed up who've uh, bought tickets and whatnot um it's just a depressing thing all uh, overall um this is more like uh yeah it's just no events are going to happen for the next two weeks and this may yeah bleed out. May- this may bleed out into events upcoming they we have shiny colors spring party which is like two weeks after the current after the um the ban period um we may need to see the development of the things of how how things are or if they can be contained by then if you know if the prime minister says we can go ahead and um continue or if they want to extend the ban period if they do shiny party might also get um might also be caught in the crossfire but it's just an unsure time it's an uncertain time for like events because um mostly uh, mostly it is depressing because this is where we get most of the content, right? Uh, we don't get content for like big news unless an event happens because that's where they plan to handle yeah. uh, stuff like we could have gotten more news about Starlet Season, but we couldn't because Type A Game Show was also canceled due to this virus. Um, we can't yes. get more stuff for Side M because the 315 Pro meeting is not going to happen. Um, yeah. The, the closest thing we could probably think of is maybe they'll just do like blog updates where they just like tell us what they were going to announce, but not really have an event dedicated to it because, well, again, all those events were canceled. Yeah, um, I'm not an expert on it because um, uh, oh, I have been reading like very, very, very extensively into this because I'm actually very worried about the state of this. It's not something that's going to like, you know, turn people into zombies it's obviously not no Uh, no it's i mean realistically as long as you be careful of what you're touching 
Um, be careful when you're traveling. And for the love of God, I emphasize this more than anything else. Wash your hands. Yeah, wash your hands. Like, every single time you go, you leave the bathroom, please, for the love of humanity, wash your goddamn hands. I'm, I'm so scared. Because I see so many people go to the bathroom and they either wash, don't wash their hands at all, or worse, they just wet them and leave. And it's like, no, motherfucker, you need soap. Soap and water, for the love of God. Yes, Shu, there are a lot of people that don't wash their hands. In fact, one fun fact that I found out about was that in Japan, not a lot of public bathrooms actually have soap. So that's a big, like, thing of concern for them. Yeah, they have to restructure a lot of things. And um, to spin this on, like, at least a, a little hopeful note, it's not like most of the uh, most of the seiyu are down in the dumps. Like, I've seen a lot of wholesome exchanges between, like, the side MPs who are supposed to go around. Um, Chocho from Million Lives, she was also trying to reach out to most of the producers, saying that she really wanted to, uh, to for the, the Million Live crews to continue um and then there was like uh, cuz MR stage was cut off uh halfway through we were almost going to have Iori perform and then that's when it was got canceled so uh Kugyu also reassured her fans that she wants to see uh, she wants them to see Iori soon and stuff so it's not like everything is like everyone's sad everyone's de- super depressed right there's a lot of still like uh positivity going on going along with like how the seiyus talk to their fans and how the fans respond uh, it's pretty wholesome, but again, we have to prioritize their health. We have to prioritize stuff like, you know, whether or not they'll be able to at least even perform because it's still pretty risky. Um, um, if I remember correctly, I think there was a Twitter hashtag that was all yeah. about just like different producers giving like good vibes during this whole situation. So they made a tag that was called "Amids." Uh, uh, it's something like "Amids IMAS event cancellations due to coronavirus." Please listen to this. So it's like they, they, they show other producers the songs they want to listen to amidst the virus cancellation so that they can have something to look forward to. It's like, it's like they're, it was as if they were saying, okay, we're kind of worried about the joint producer meeting, uh, but if in case that we push through this and we make it out of this and the joint producer meetings do happen, please listen to this song because this is the song from my branch that I want you to listen to so that if ever we meet, finally, after all this is done, we can enjoy these songs together. So it was really, really... I like that about producers. I like, I like that a lot. Yeah, that's good. That, that, that's really good. It's really positive, reassuring, basically saying that even though this is a really bad situation, we can make it out of this together. So, yeah, I really do like that. I like that everyone's just giving off very good, positive vibes during what's a very scary time. And, you know, they're not even, like, flaming Bamco or anything because, no, like, imagine if this was in, like, an, any other country. I'd say there's, like, a non-zero amount of chance that people are, like, they're going to get angry and say, give me back my money or nothing and all that stuff. Uh, you know, even though we already are confirmed that, you know, Bandai Namco and all, like, Bushy Road, all these other companies are... Refunded. We're getting our money back, getting yeah. Money back. Um, uh, well, Chiaking's news wasn't even related to the coronavirus. It was appendicitis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she, yeah, she had appendicitis for, like, I think, like, about a week. And yeah, then a she, week. she got released. left. Yeah, she got released. She's so perfectly she's fine. perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, that's where we stand currently with the coronavirus uh, situation. Uh, that's where we stand with like how we're going to respond to it, uh, what we have to think about it. I mean, it's super bummer that a lot of things got canceled. But again, uh, we have to make sure that the, the people who are supporting the series and the people who are uh, performing for it stay alive at least. Because you'd rather, yeah. you'd rather wait a year to keep them there rather than just push on and be stubborn and have them just risk themselves right so that's where we're going exactly yeah it's it's all a matter of like like granted i've heard a lot of people say that oh this is an overreaction oh they're stressing themselves too much over something that's weaker than the flu but on like while i can agree there's a little bit of overreaction especially here in the united states sorry at all yeah better safe than sorry exactly um joe would you have anything to input with like the situation and what you've heard um, I mean, not much that hasn't already been echoed already, you know, I mean, I'm somebody that doesn't have the opportunity to travel, so I completely understand that, like, 
my opinion on this isn't too heavy. But I mean, obviously for a lot of the people, because I know we had a lot of international producers that were planning on going to some of these events, and now to have them canceled is like a huge you know, issue to have to deal with in terms of like rescheduling, whether or not they're going to be rescheduled. You know, those are things that we haven't really heard from any of the other branches yet as to whether or not, you know, hey, we're delaying these, but is it actually a delay or are we just not doing them? Um, they're straight up canceled as of the moment. Um, I think they re- uh, Bandai Namco released an actual legit, like, because Bandai Namco had like an entire month's worth of events for like all their stuff. They had like Idol Master stuff, they had Sword Art Online stuff, they had Gundam, they had all that stuff. And then they said, uh, there's like a, a footnote at the very end that says, if ever we, yeah, that one. Uh, all live events up until 3.15 are canceled, and uh, there wasn't anything saying anything about rescheduling. So, of course, I think mm. they, they'd say that just so that people won't expect anything and then, you know, make plans. They, they, want, to make, uh, they want to make sure that, yeah, that's why. Uh, it, it, it's, it coincides with the 315 Pro Meet. Um, uh, it's because I, of the two weeks. Uh, by, by so, 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 so essentially, this is more so an indefinite hiatus than anything right now. Yeah, it's an indefinite hiatus on events. Um, we're not going to see, like, well, Million Cruise, of course, just uh, was supposed to... M- million Cruise can't really happen of course, at this because, point. I mean, especially because it's so political about how most of Japan's cases came from a boat. So, yeah. Anything re- uh, concerning boats right now, might want to not do boat things for a while. Boats are not nice. Boats are not nice. We are, wow, we are not having a nice well, boat this 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 month, guys. I'm sorry. I was I, I was I was about to say you're putting Azure Lane on full blast right there. What the fuck? Anyway, um, yeah, safety is the first thing, uh, and we just hope that Bandai Namco and all the other companies can you know uh, adjust, uh, make the right decisions. And so far they have. So far they have. Um, it just sucks, but it's necessary. Yeah. It's a necessary measurement. It's just, it just really hurts that you know you can't really that a lot of these events are getting canceled, and we're looking forward to that. But it is what it is, and we all got to be safe. Um, unfortunately, traveling is so limited, so like other events might be affected. Not so much in terms of like cancel, but in terms of how many producers are able to go. Yeah. Because if I remember correctly, um, our very own Edwin, he got yeah. prohibited from traveling. For by um, United, so as a result, he can't go to Shiny's second live, and then he has to get his ticket refunded and all that stuff. Yeah, pretty bad. Yeah, and yeah, like, like uh, sh- shot in the dark. I I just think that at this point, Bandai Namco is really gonna have to like extend. Like if if like let's for say example, the dream scenario happens, right? Like let's say for dream scenario happens, um, things kind of. Fix themselves up by like the, the the later half of the year. I think Bandai Namco is just gonna go yeah. ahead and like reschedule and extend the entire 15th anniversary thing to 2021 all the way just to accommodate things that they had in mind and stuff. Um, and you know, 16th anniversary becomes the 15th anniversary. 15th anniversary part two, something like that. Uh, like <laughs> something like an extension. So. I hope they do that because it, it's a bummer that this year of all years, 15.5? 15.5. Yeah, that's <laughs> that, that sounds like some that's, Kingdom Hearts shit. That's some, that's some Kingdom Hearts. Uh, Idol Master 15.5 redrop birth by something. I don't know. HD, H- HD, HD Remix. HD Remix. Yeah. <laughs> Featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. We, we should put Dante inside him. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's all we could have like... Uh, covered about the depressing stuff because that was a whole 20 minutes of depression and i don't think people are already uh, people have already enough in their own lives so let's go ahead with some all right news. let's yeah let's let's, let, let, let's get to something a little yeah, more exciting let's so <clears throat> over to the uh topics that we had today uh we have four um and i have three for the brand i have three um, one for cg one for million live one for side i think i'm gonna have to i I can start on like a pretty major CG one. I don't know if this is the same one you have, but okay. So earlier this month, we actually got details on this year's Cinderella girls election. And this one's very interesting. Okay, good. So this one's very interesting in that, okay, we're going to have our standard CG election, just like we do every year, yada, yada, yada. Like the, the format's pretty much the same since like, 
2016. That's never changing. What is interesting is that they're bringing back the voice audition election. Now, for those of you that don't know, in case you, you know, joined in during, like, Starlight Stage or, like, at some point afterward, in 2015, um, Bandai Namco and Psy Games had an election called the Voiced Auditions, where producers would go onto the CG Mobage and they would vote for what idol they want voiced. And the whoever got first place in that election would get a voice. That was how Arisu Tachibana, she was able to get a voice. And they stopped doing that because there was a little bit of a controversy that happened during that election Are where sure a lot Arisu? of... Sh- Are you sure they didn't stop it because of... Shiro? It was... Or... It, okay, or... I, I was getting to that. Yeah, okay. Arisu was the one that won. Like, she won the voice election. But Shuko Peas felt that it was, like, a little bit... It was rigged because Shuko was, like shooting to the top in the preliminaries and then Arisu just suddenly won not only that but she, like right during um that victory she already had a voice so some Shuko P's were very suspicious and thinking that maybe you know Bamko and Psy Games they rigged the election to get Arisu voiced so Shuko P's just flooded the CG general election for the following year and as a result, that was how Shuko got to be Cinderella Girl, despite not being voiced, so that they could guarantee her a voice. So, despite all of that, they're trying it again, but the format changed a little bit, in that instead of just first place getting voiced, it's now going to be the top three. And if I remember correctly, they're also going to get their own event in Starlight Stage. So... There's a big reason for this, right? Um, The big reason for this is that 2019 had a gigantic speed bump in, like, how CG would do things, how CG would uh, carry out their elections, how, like, there was a gigantic mix-up in a lot of things that they had to consider. Mainly because the seven new idols introduced four idols into Starlight Stage directly with voices and content straight up. Like they didn't mm-hmm. even need to go through any processes. They didn't even know. You know I've tackled this. I've tackled this topic like thousands of times, so I'm just gonna brush over it right now. Uh, they were already given content. They were already given voices and events and costumes and all that. So of course, this raveled the CG community and it caused one of the biggest uproars of CG's history. So I think mm-hmm. this voice election. I think bringing back the voice election is a direct response to the potential looming feelings of you know disappointment that some producers have of course the four girls or, or were, just neglect for yeah, unvoiced just yeah. neglect for unvoiced girls of course the four girls are now treated better now because people are now like they know that they're i the problem won't be solved by hating the girls the problem is going to be you know asking side games or asking bomco to fix what they actually have to do because if they're going to keep the, the same stru- uh, election structure forever it's going to take forever for like girls who have been fought for since year five like i know nanami peas have been like fighting forever for her and uh some like frilled square lmbg girls a little yeah little marching band girls um it's gonna take forever for them to win so uh this allows people to vote in two different ways whether they want to vote for the voice they want or whether they want to vote for like who they think the general to win. yeah though i will say my only concern is that there could be a little bit of overlap between the voice election and the general election in that some of the same people will rank high for both. That's the only concern I have. But other than that, I feel like, yeah, this is kind of a good, like, middle ground where a lot of people at this point have been, like, focusing more on the elections in terms of who's getting voice rather than who's going to win the title. I know I have because putting in personal opinion here, I generally do not care who wins the Cinderella Girls elections every year, because whoever's going to win is always... It, it's it's always, like, very much assumed. Like, you already know who's going to win based on, okay, who's consistently ranking high. Like, I'm, I'm just going to say right now, Cotton is going to win this year. Like, Cotton is guaranteed she's number one. She's going to win this year. N- not because of, you know... how, Not because, like, I'm rooting for her, but because... Trends are basically saying she's the next one in line because she's ranked high consistently in the past few years. She ranked second last year. So, uh, well, I wouldn't say rigged. I, I say would rigged. say more. 
I wouldn't say rigged. I would say more that their producers are so consistent with wanting them to just rank high and win that it's predictable. You know exactly who's going to win. Like everyone knew um, Nana was going to win last year. Last last year. I, or, or what, last last year. Everyone knew Mio was going to win last year. Like everyone knows who's going to win. That's why me personally, the most interesting part of the of last election wasn't you know the fact that Mio was going to win. But it was the fact that Solid Snake got Natalia voiced. Okay, that, so let, that was interesting. That's a, segue, oh, like, that's a segue into something that was funny here. So along with the uh, new structure that they brought back, uh, voice selection, and they changed voice selection to be not just the top one and top <clears> one, two, three. Okay, this is going to be something really, really interesting to talk about or just interesting to discuss over. There is a, I don't really know how to word this because it's still in Japanese and, um, you know, people can interpret this stuff a lot of times. You know, people who actually know Japanese have read it. People who use Google Translate, the ever-loving, horrible Google Translate to, you know, read that Japanese statement by Bandai Namco <laughs> and Side Games. But basically, uh, the, the point is they don't want people to do what they do did for Natalia again. They don't want... Yeah, I, I think, yeah. They, they, they're the actively is, discouraging it. They're, they're not banning they're it, not but banning they're it, discouraging yeah. it. I think the wording is like, they discourage or they... they they choose or they recommend against... There, they recommend against uh, using third-party uh, companies or third-party, like... Yeah, they... they, they... The, the the statement was basically saying, um, we recommend that producers not pay outside sources in order to manipulate and manage how the elections are going. By the way, uh, give us more money so that you can buy as many election tickets as possible to vote in our elections. Just saying. I mean, it's fifty dollars as for a commission, as compared to like how many dollars are they gonna spend uh, spending for tickets? But it's weird. It's like it's so. I didn't think that what that happened back there would make a direct impact on the rules of the of the elections next year. It's still, I'm like, I, hmm, I just I just find it hilarious that Mahato and Top Johnny, yeah, they they, they made such an impact on that last year. All because Mahato made a joke. As f- like as if I remember correctly, what he told me was that like Mahato recommended it as like a sort of like joke, and Top Johnny he just straight up did it, and it's gotten so big that yeah, Bandai Namco and Side Games had to release a statement basically saying, uh, yeah, maybe you shouldn't do that. I li- I had my own tinfoil hat, you know, uh, my own tinfoil hat thinking about it but you know i'm not gonna share it anymore because it's probably just moot and stuff but anyway uh for the most part cg elections this year uh i don't i don't have anyone i'm rooting for because yukimi already won so again uh on where i where i personally stand with cg at the moment is they've already given me everything i want so i'm just here to watch how other people you know uh generate content for the community and um shape how it's gonna go like for for the rest of the years and i think restructuring, um, restructuring the elections this way is definitely a great step forward because a lot of people were pissed a lot of people were pissed last year i'm just i'm just gonna be in the background vibing see who gets voiced because at this point i pretty much got a lot of the idols i want voiced and my favorite unvoiced has like a one in one million four hundred and six chance of actually getting a voice that I've just lost a lot of hope in that. So I'm just vibing. You're just checking things out. You're just chilling. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, for everyone listening, uh, you you have... um it's it's Aya. Oh, he's waiting for Aya. Um, is yeah. it Aya like Kozu's mom? Like they always push her. To yes. Like okay, okay. Yes. But 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 at the same time, they've been pushing like I think there was someone else they're pushing as like Kozue's other mom lately. Well, so like, that just gives me, like was also less... pushed to be like Yukimi's mom. So All right. see, like no IFP. Oh man, that's that's crushing. That that's crushing to me right here. What the fuck? <laughs> well, uh, for the listeners out there, I, I mean you're right, but also goddamn it, we gotta uh, we gotta push through metal. metal we gotta push through. So. Uh, <laughs> for the listeners out there who have, uh, you know, who were probably wondering about if the if the structure for the elections or this year will, you know, make a change, it's definitely going to make a change. So this will probably be one of the more interesting ones. Uh, always course. remember to vote, and you know, since Starlight Stage now has <laughs> integrated voting, so you can vote there easier. You don't need to like get a Japanese phone number or something and whatnot. 
Yeah, which is good. I do like that they started integrating Starlight Stage into the election so that now more people are able to t- take part in the election because at this point, I I know damn well that like Bamco and Psy Games are probably aware that there's a lot of international players out there, but they probably realize that the original mobile game is so inaccessible or like so hard to access for a lot of the Western audience that they probably wanted them to like partake in it in an easy way. So they decided to have Starlight Stage as another avenue for that. And that's Which exactly is why they're cutting down on the mobile mass content and putting everything into Starlight Stage. Oh actually, god. Okay, actually... okay, okay. That was that was in the middle of February. So like, can we just briefly get into that? Oh, uh, so it's a, it's like really brief. I mean, it's not like gonna be. It's gonna it's gonna like be. Good, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. So so basically, um, earlier this month, either earlier this month or very late last month, Psy Games officially released a statement where they were basically just slowing down mobile mass content, like for content for the original CG mobile game. It would still be getting like regular um like new SRs and stuff. They'd just be like less at a time. The like word usually they there would be was, the word they used was you, drastically you, reduced. Yes, usually it would be like five or six new cards, but n- right now it's usually just like two or three. Yeah. And while we are seeing that, um, there was also something interesting that happened yesterday where one of the new SRs was, and I shit you not. A copy paste of Kai Nishijima's old R with a different expression and a new background. That's it. That's the SR. As if they felt like they needed to say or like they needed to like project. This is the kind of content we're gonna give Mobile Mass for a while. And like, you know, Riyamu got or, or, one, and it's still pretty or, cool. Or, or, but this is inexcusable. Like, we're probably going to flash the cards on the screen. We're going to edit the cards onto the screen. Like, the yeah. rare, the or, rare or, or, that we're talking about in the, in the S rare. Yeah. Like, like, like it, it kind of gives me, like, two vibes. It gives me a vibe that they're starting to get, like, a little desperate in terms of releasing mobile mass content. Because I feel, like, don't quote me on this. I don't know anything that happens behind the scenes. And I don't know if this actually happened. But I feel like Psy Games might have gotten like a little bit of flack in terms of you know how um cg is going to be slowing down content or at the very least they caused like a little bit of a scare so they probably tried to find some way to like have new content without actually like spending the resources to make like actual new like assets so they're essentially just like doing a lot of this filler content and the more darker side of my brain is thinking that this is showing at possible end times for Moba Mass. I mean, I mean, uh, it, it's fr- it's freaky how we think that side M Moba is actually doing way is actually looking way more bright than CG Moba at this point. It's a yeah world for sure. Because, great, great, because, granted, because, CG Moba. I will fully admit, CG Moba is very outdated. It's it's almost ten years old. I mean, like, like Side and Moba actually got like super great content recently, and to think that they're on that side, and CG Moba is saying, "Okay, actually, we put a time bomb on you right now. We're probably gonna have to blow you up soon and move everything." Or, or at least it stage. feels like that. Yeah, it feels like that. Like, 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 who knows if it will actually like keep going? I don't know, but it's. Like it, it, it's looking a little grim for Moba Mass, and I'm not. I like it's scary, but I'm also not surprised because not surprised. again, Moba Mass is Moba Mass is almost ten years old, which for a mobile game that's a that's an eternity. And since then, they really haven't been updating like the actual like infrastructure. They, they've been like p- posting more like SRs and Rs for the game. Of course, they've been updating it, but they haven't like actually like, genuinely updated, like, the UI, the gameplay, or anything like that. Like, it's very outdated compared to something like Starlight Stage. Yeah, um, so someone here mentioned that they don't look close it unless it will really shift into SS. It's not Gree. Well, uh, again, I have to, well, I have to echo this again. It's not like Gree closed down because they were going to shift into Theater Days. If anything, I think Grimas and Theater Days could have existed at the same time. It's just that Gree itself was a horrible platform. You know, it, yeah, it was it, it was basically like a lot of disagreement between bad. Whoa, whoa! That caused um. Oh, Gree went what? Really? They went bankrupt. Yeah, Gree went bankrupt. 
So uh, oh shit, that's I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's not Million Lives' fault, okay? It wasn't Million Lives' fault. It's Gree's fault, and Bamco has actually learned their lesson from the Grima scenario because they they knew that the platform wasn't you know uh, well known. So what Bamco then did as a as a as a learning point, right, is that they they're going to buy Enza. They're going yeah. To, yeah they're going to buy Enza. So that, you know, shiny colors won't suffer the same fate. No matter what happens to Enza, no matter, you know, if, if Enza also, you know, goes under for some if, strange reason. Yeah, if, 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 yeah, if, like, if, like, Enza loses on popularity, at the very least, they're going to be a little more safe in that it, they're, they don't have to worry about, you know, it getting, like, super bankrupt or at the very least, like, losing a lot of that intellectual property because, well, they're going to own Enza. And also, let's be real here. In terms of like games on the Enza platform, people are only really focusing on Shiny Colors and Famista, which are both Bandai Namco properties. So I mean, might as well, right? Might as well. Might as well. So yeah, that's that. that so that's why we're thinking like uh, the whole idea that Mobamas isn't is gonna get axed because of the focus to side stage. It's not because, uh, well. I guess it does help that it's super outdated. Like Metal said, it's like ten, nine years or something. So it, it, it's going to be ten years old next year. Yeah. Again, it's Jesus Christ. Twenty eleven was almost ten years ago. Fuck me. Wow, man. Wow, man. Um, but there are a lot of people who rather just click, you know, screens. Uh, did, did you know that there's still like a, a vast majority of like the CG Japanese fan base who don't who don't play Starlight Stage at all? Like a vast majority. I'm not surprised. Of, yeah, a vast majority of the CG Japanese fan base. Don't even have a Starlight Stage account. Like, they don't even play the game at all. They just go to lives and play Mobile Mass. That's it. I know a lot of yeah. CG peeps who are like that. You know, like, I'm, 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 not su- I'm not surprised. Like, a lot of those people are probably like, oh, geez. Like, they've been playing since, like, 2011. They're probably the people who voted for, like, Irie as Cinderella Girl. Whoops, I think I'm going to get canceled now. <laughs> oh, now, uh, now you're Sorry, guys. podcast over. <laughs> our co- our host has died. <laughs> our, our 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 host has died. Now I'm taking over the podcast. Uh, I am letting that <laughs> happen. I am letting that happen because we're gonna move over to our second topic. Uh, second good oh. topic. Third topic of the podcast, but second topic that people are actually looking forward to. Uh, so second topic. Uh, we have million live news coming up here, and for, yeah, million live news. Um, we're now seeing the full effect of their new Gasha, uh, their new Gasha scheme. And oh, yeah. for the most part, uh, um, they, I, I very uh, much appreciate the whole idea that they said, this is how we're going to do Gasha. This is how we're going to do patterns. Because, like, Gasha is evil, but at least telling us <laughs> what would happen to what they release is a good idea, right? So that we can prepare. Because uh, ever yeah. since the Kancha side, they told us what's going to happen is that start of the month is going to be double limb. Or like Mm -hmm. end of the month over the start of the month is going to be double limiteds. And then middle of the month is going to be their usual, their classic themed one, the seasonal ones, the seasonal gashas. Yeah, the the seasonal ones, one limited, one permanent. One limited, one permanent. And then the final one is going to be Song for You. Now, Song for You is a new type of gasha where the song, sorry, the art of the card that's going to be featured will be directly connected to a song that is related to the girl who will be featured now for example and the art will also be done by a different artist yeah the art is done by a different artist for example let's take our new uh brand new uh, example which was kana because kana was given the song of february and uh well at least the new song for february uh which was omajinai and for her uh song for you gacha she was given the following two cards which once you put them on the screen you're going to obviously see that they appear to be completely different art style from arata the classic million live artist uh you'll see it in the awakened card uh much more so than the unawakened card because the cell shading is different and then you know the basically the art direction is completely like unlike arata's so it's pretty cool that they're doing this uh, I think Song For You is really great because Million Live Peas appreciate their music a lot. It's the, practically the reason why every time you go over to those uh, yearly polls about you know music and song elections, it's always Million Live Peas who vote the most because they're the ones who care about their music the most. Um, mm-hmm. So it, connecting the gasha <coughs> to the songs of the girls is a really, really, really good idea because uh, for the most part, 
people care about the music of my of Million Live the most. Sometimes they don't even care about the characters; they just care about the music. But this is now a good way for people who don't care about the characters to now care more because the music is now integrated into the cat uh, into the gacha cards. Um, mm-hmm. And they're both permanent, so it's not scummy. It's not like super. Give me your yeah, card. yeah. You can you can you you can get these from a subtix eventually, or like by accident when you spark somebody in fast like that. It's yeah, not super just that's really good. Yeah, like 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 I I'm perfectly cool with them being transparent about their release schedules in terms of okay, this is when the limiteds are happening. This is going to be when the perms are happening. Like I do really like that. I mean, the only thing that bugs me is why the hell did they start with Shiho? Limited, limited. <laughs> that has me. That ha- yeah, Shiho Miki. That has me personally on tilt because I'm like, God damn it! I have been saving jewels. Now I gotta. Hey I'm, boy, we were uh, just caught in the crossfire. Granted, we were soldiers on granted, the battlefield caught in the crossfire. Granted, I had seven ten roll tickets saved up from. I think it was the con yeah, conscious the, the comp- side. The, no, it was yeah. No, it wasn't the conscious side. It was the compensation from that really weird bug where everybody got more free rolls than than anticipated. Okay. So yeah. Bandai yeah. 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 Gave everyone free rolls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I still had my tickets saved up from that. Nine rolls later, jack shit. And I'm like, I'm too poor right now, so I'm just gonna I just lifted my hands up and quit. I, who have a completely different story, am just not gonna say anything. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good card. But like, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's a it's a great card, especially the unawakened is adorable, but god fucking damn it. Yeah, yeah. It had to start with the limited on me. Like 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 like, like 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 I like I woke up, like I okay I didn't wake up like because of course Million Live announces their um what's gonna be on the Gasha like two hours before the actual Gasha starts two three hours, but like when I first heard it I was just like freaking out in the worst way possible like God damn it or shit like that like it was it was rough <laughs> it was rough and like you know Shiho and Miki two very very popular idols gotta make that money you gotta make them money man. Um, yeah, you gotta make bank. Again, transparency is the best part about this. We know that we can't. We know we won't be blindsided. We won't be like you know because we just got off of you know shiny colors having a very very you know uh, horrible and abusive limited schedule like in the past uh, four months. So we the, uh, the card is she hope but the yeah. 3D model is her brother. <laughs> yeah, we just got off of shiny colors having a very like very unfavorable limited model. Uh, concerning their cards in the past four months, so us cross branch, us multi branch people were like, okay, we at least appreciate the fact that the the million live team are gonna say what happens in terms of Gasha. So that's a really good and, and and considering that they that they've said like the pattern, we now pretty much know how it's gonna be for every month, at least until they change it up again. Yeah, at least until they change it up. I don't think they're gonna change it up because if this is like a super successful one, because song for you Gasha will have to be will have to like. Be giving <laughs> cards to the entire roster first before mm-hmm. changing up. So that's fifty-two girls. Yeah, man. fifty-two months. Will we even have MLTD again, or will we even be alive after fifty-two months? Lol. Uh, but again, they're definitely ah, going to put cool. multiples per banner. They're definitely going to. Oh yeah. No, yeah I, I mean, we already. I mean, we already have two. So realistically, wouldn't it be sorry, like twenty-six 26 months? months? Yeah, twenty-six months. Actually, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah, that's about like two years. Two years, yeah. Doesn't seem all that uh, doesn't seem all that impossible. But but hey, man, that's more consistent content for the next two years. Okay, so yeah, uh, pretty exciting stuff for Million Live. Uh, again, we appreciate it that we won't be blindsided by Gasha. Uh, before I go um, to my next topic, I want to give the shiny uh, topic a little. Uh, a um, little um, j- b- b- before before we get to the shiny topic, um, like. I'm sorry, but like just a quick shout out to um the Matsuri event that happened during the right. month where we where there was like this whole like event commu story where Matsuri lost her memory because she got hit in the head by a baseball and she acted like a completely different person and everyone like online freaked out. It was it was a lot. Like I legit saw on on Twitter, like Japanese people were like, "Oh, Million Life has fifty three idols now. We have Matsuri, and now we have this new one." <laughs> but 
Million Live now has a new idol girl. It's this one. She has straight green hair, and then she's also voiced by Ayakasua, but she doesn't sound like Matsuri. Who's this new one? We have, we have, we we have Matsuri. We have a Holy Order Matsuri. I think people said <laughs> Awakened Matsuri, which was like, wow. Can you not? Can you? Can you not use that <laughs> word? Can you not use Mat- that I word? Mean, oh man, Matsuri lopping off her hair. Yeah, and then it's like straight and up. So it's like a completely different idol. It was really cool. It was really nice. I, I really like this event. Um, and wow, okay. Uh, we just reminded me that the, that the real stuff is going to happen this March. If y'all are playing Million Live Theater Days, the real stuff is happening this month in March. Yeah, that's the card. We're going to put the card up on the screen too. So it's straight hair Matsuri. She has no idea what idols are. She actually will admit that she likes. She doesn't like marshmallows. She has no idea who Mirai and Meow is like that. So yeah. Yeah. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. So uh, I'll give this time to the shiny, uh, color, uh, shiny colors topics uh, because I had to take a quick trip to the restroom. So uh, Cho, go ahead and take it off. Sure. So, this month has been relatively quiet. I mean, we had one of our big streams that happened uh, not too long ago. It was, uh, it pretty much featured all of Straylight, and it was kind of just, you know, standard news uh, roundup kind of deal. But, uh, it's appropriate that I'm the one talking about this, because they added a small new uh, segment to the Shiny streams. Which is that they are now doing card showcases, and doing some recommendations for what exactly to do with the card. So when they revealed May 2, uh, her new SSR, they also went ahead and gave ideas for cards that you should use alongside the <clears throat> May. And while obviously their format is a lot more, is a lot simpler, it's just like, ah, dang. So I wonder which dev is looking at Shiny Review, which has been going for a couple months now, and saying, hey, maybe that's a good idea. I mean, I mean, I mean, considering that um, on the Shiny Colors Discord, we do have a few developers on there. It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if at least a few of them saw your videos and were just like, maybe that this will be a good idea for people that are into this game for the gameplay aspect. We need to see if they'll do it for like all the cards, right? Because maybe Maze was like a my 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 friend said that they might have set, done it for a Maze card because May is a part of Straylight, and at the moment nobody knows how to freaking play Straylight because it's so hard how to you know stack because Straylight doesn't really have a lot. <laughs> yeah, so they're like, okay, this is how you're gonna use this card to help out this unit, and maybe if they're gonna do it for every video, I think we finally, I think. It is a showing that, hey, they were looking at what we're doing. They were looking at, you know, the kind of stuff we're into. And they're integrating it into their actual official stream. So that's going to be freaking great if we actually manage it. Exactly. Now, other other news. Uh, during this month, we also, of course, had... And this actually goes more or less across all the branches. But we had uh, Wanfest. Oh, right. Yeah. Wonder Festival. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we can talk so... about Wonder Festival. So at least for, for our side of it, in case we want to double back to the other branches, uh, there are at least two major announcements that we got from Wanfest for Shiny, which is that uh, there is a new Rinze figure on the way based off of her Fest version of SSR1. And then I believe it's Good Smile is working on a Kogane figure that's based off of her Fest outfit from SSR2. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna put the, sh- yeah. the I'm gonna put the cards on the chat right now so that people can see it and you know we're going yeah. to, we're going to put um, the cards edited on the screen for the uh, YouTube video and all that the recording so yeah and also um, if I remember correctly I think Fat is also working on a Fuyuko oh yeah Fat's working for Fuyuko uh, they already announced it for Fuyuko so that's the one for the Rinzai figure and this is the one for the Kogane figure. Um, yeah, it's a fun Rinzei. I like this Rinzei. Uh, yeah, it's good. Like, 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 if you see the um, prototype for the Rinzei, the way that they have the smear on the mop was very well done. Yeah, uh, I like it when they 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 pick the 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 cards that have items in it, like mops, mic stands. Because Miria also recently had a figure where she has like a deck brush and stuff. So Rinzei reminds you of that, and it's, it, it allows you to go crazy with it because it looks a lot better than just like, you know, a girl standing there, right? Uh, it's a lot, you know, more involving. So I think Rinzei being chosen first out of HCG doesn't surprise me at all because Rinzei, like, as compared to the rest of Hokago, is like, 
above and beyond popularity uh, popularity there and it, it's it, it doesn't surprise me at all that she gets the first one who gets the figure yeah this is under boob kogane so um, i actually like that they picked this one because kogane psr1 if you ask me doesn't offer a lot as a figure it doesn't offer too yeah much it's it's very standard it is super standard two, two. Two, you could at the very least play with like the steampunk aesthetic and the cloth. Yeah, and like the wings and stuff. Uh, it's got a dynamic pose because PSSR one doesn't have a dynamic pose. This one does, so that's why I think this is a better choice. Um, yeah, Fuyuko only really has one PSSR, so we already know ex exactly which one that's gonna exactly. Be. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they even showed like an image of it yeah, too, image. just to, like let you know. That, yeah, we're going to be doing PSSR 1 for Fuyuko, which makes sense. Uh, doubling back to the other branches, I think uh, if y'all can remember the CG ones, because I think there are like three of them, but for Million Live, uh, the, the amazing announcement was, uh, and this is you know, probably a way to make bank off of the, some of the most richest P's of the Million Live community. Um, <laughs> they previously announced Kaori SSR 1, and that surprised mm -hmm. nobody, because Kaori is popular. What, of course. Uh, what surprised everybody was the fact that they were going to make a figure of the exact same Kaori SSR, only it's the color of the costume when oh. you five star her in game. And yeah, which which, which which is interesting. Yeah. Like 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 it's yeah. like it's the exact same mold and everything. They just recolored it, and I think they changed the hat to be the crown. Yeah, they changed the hat to be the crown. It's basically like this sets a precedent, right? Because if they're gonna do it for Kaori for all the million live figures, does that mean they're gonna do it for everybody? And I think it's a good telling that they they announced mostly the million live figures of super popular girls because they announced Anna, Shiho, Chihaya, and. It tells me that if they're going to make figures of these girls, and they already did five-star figure announcements for Kaori, there's no way they're not going to do stuff for, like, Anna, Shiho. No way they're not going to do that. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I think uh, I already saw a lot of Kaori P's, like, literally pre-order both, the, the, the first one and the second one. So, <laughs> it, you know, like, like I said, Mad Bank. Um, so... It's interesting how they they're, they're paying attention to the alt costume thing because it's it's only a thing in Million Live. Uh, the other games when you get a PSSR or an SSR, it's only one costume. In Million Live, you essentially get three uh, because it's the base yeah. one, a recolor when you go four star, and an eventual recolor when you get five star. So I think that they were taking that into account when they made a Million Live figures. Yeah, that 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 that's also easy money because again, realistically, you can recycle the exact same mold. You just color the outfit differently, and you can resell that easily. And you know, for a fact, million live people are gonna buy that. They're gonna buy. Yeah, anything. they'll they'll buy anything. Well, yeah, not exactly anything. But 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 at the very least, we'll buy like figures because they look nice. Yeah, they look nice. I personally okay, people will buy toothbrushes, they'll buy this. Oh god. <laughs> you had to spin it back up with a toothbrush. Yes. <laughs> god. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna wait for B I'm just gonna wait for like the rest of Antica, because like Sakuya is confirmed, Kogan is confirmed, even though it's not like the same costume because while while Sakia's figure is of her PSSR one, it's not the pose from PSSR one. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I think it's um, it's, it's the, either it's, like a generic pose or that was it was the pose that they did for promotional. Yeah, artwork. promotional. Yeah, promotional it was pose. it was the promo pose. Yeah, so if okay. They, if they do that for like the rest of everybody, I'm probably gonna eye on seeing like how low I can get the price for like all of Antica. So that's gonna be pretty good. Yeah, I'm gunning for that. P for that SSR one Shiho because if I can't get her in the game, I'll at the very least have her IRL. Yeah, Riamuz is basically just her R. Yeah, which granted at the time of when that was figure was had, being though. made, that was probably yeah, that was probably all she had. Yeah, so no. So figures, yeah. Uh, w w were we were you done with shiny or were you still going to continue with like winter? Or... Um, I think that's basically it because otherwise, like. Yeah, we don't really have a whole lot of other news to, like, explicitly talk about. I mean, I know we have Ellie in here, and Ellie does keep a lot more tabs on the news by the nature of running the... being the primary caretaker of the the Twitter. So The English Twitter. Yeah. yeah. I think we've got um, all that we need to. Did um, 
there there are two things from Shiny to like take a note of for last month. One is actually the recent event that's going on, the um Alstromeria event. Like that that's a that's pretty okay. much been a big deal for a lot yeah. of people considering um, that it gave um a little bit of insight on how um Alstromeria's unit dynamics will go moving forward. I don't want to talk about it too much because it's just going on. And I don't want to bring in spoilers, but j- just saying, prepare, prepare to cry is what I'm saying. So, for less spoilery things to discuss about the Alstroberia event, I personally, like, I am actually here as an advocate to say that a lot of the art leading up to like when, like, you know, December ended and then January and February, uh, like, people have noticed that it's kind of it's kind of dipping back down in quality but when you check out like the new cards from the most recent uh the new ssr the new ssrs the new ssr mana and ssr chiki or the event chiki and then like the backgrounds i think they actually managed to bring it back up to the quality we like because like details the buildings. ssr tanka looks so good yeah the support ssr tanka is so super good um it's like the very soft colors tones um the fact that they really like I like it when shiny does soft colors, right? I think when shiny does everything too hard and over ex- over expressed, they just kind of like when you when shiny goes too hard on it and goes over expressing themselves, they get things like Kogane 4. They get things like um what's it? They get things like uh Kaho 4 sort of in some certain places other than like uh it just goes everywhere. But I think I like it a lot more when Shiny goes for softer colors. And the new support Tenka SSR definitely displays it a lot. Uh, there, the Kaho 4 Fest is much greater than normal. I don't like... Um, basically, when they go for softer colors, I like it a lot more. And... I can't believe our, our, our guests out here shaming maids, saying that maids no good. Wow. <laughs> wow. Seriously? Hey, 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 now, hey, now, she's trying her best to pour the tea. <laughs> Kaho is adorable. Okay. Maze is and, good. I think and... just, it's just that, that, that Kaho's uh, upgraded card was, like, more Kaho. It's more characterization. Yes. And um, also, another thing is um, Sweet Step, the new Shiny album, yeah. actually went number one on Daily Oricon and Weekly Billboard Japan. Yeah, because everyone so that's doing really good. everyone want to get on that second live baby. Everyone want to get on that yeah. second live baby. Yeah. And um for context, um, sh- um Sweet Step beat out all three Love Live unit CDs. So just to give you a little bit of context for just how well it's doing right now. I mean, yeah. granted, yeah, a lot of that is probably helped by, you know, the lottery ticket to get in the shiny second, but which usually is the case for a lot of these CDs. I mean, back when um I th- it was Hi-Fi days, Hi-Fi days that yeah Hi-Fi days that got the gold disc, which I think that was the first Idol Master album to get the gold disc. Mm, mm, like no Idol Master single that got a single single. Th- th- thank you single. Yeah, Hi-Fi days was the first Idol Master single to get the gold disc because it had um lottery uh, CG4. lottery ticket. Yeah, and for like, CG four. And if you ask me, CG like like the the, the recent concerts are okay, but CG fourth is the best CG live, not even close. That that, that is, if you ask me, Tri Tri Castle Story is like still one of the best executed CG lives of, of all time. So I can see why people wanted to get in the lottery that much. And Sweet Step just you know explains it again on how. And recently yeah. we're just gonna wait for we're gonna wait for the exact same thing to happen to Million Seventh. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, like whatever whatever CD is the true cent for million seventh, it's gonna happen to the exact the exact same thing's gonna happen. Um, I mean, I mean, I mean, hey, if it makes bank, why stop doing it? It's also to avoid, you know, the evils of scalping, even though it doesn't one hundred percent. But whatever. Yeah, it it doesn't help because people are already. I think people were already scalping shiny second lottery tickets, and yeah, they already scalped ugh. million seventh. So yeah, fuck fuck scalpers. If if if, if you're a scalper. Stop. Confess to your crimes right now. And make and, peace. And, 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 yes, and make peace. Because, veering slightly off topic, I had to deal with so many scalpers back in my Amiibo collecting days. Oh, man. Amiibo. It was it was so bad. Like, 
like uh, like that infamous incident. This was really scalping, but that infamous incident where one guy hated Rosalina so much he bought out all of her amiibo, or at least as much as he could, just so no one else could get her. It was ridiculous. Why do people like? That but exist? yeah, why do people like that exist? Um, I don't fuck it. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap it over to the. Uh, I think this is like the last main topic. Before we move on to like side topics, if we want to fish out, the last main topic we have is something that generally surprised me, like super a lot. Um, so when they announced that Side M Fifth Anniversary Disc was going to have some more songs included onto it, um, I, I was looking for the news about which units would be included into which, and they, we already got previews, just previews, not the full version yet. Of the first disc of the additional uh, disc four of the additional fifth anniversary songs, and we have Frame, Sem, and Legenders. Now I implore everybody to listen to these discs because this is probably one of probably going to be one of the best albums of Sidem of all time because now they have like a, a full grasp of their of their Seiyu's talent and they have a full grasp of what they can sing and whatnot. I listened to this disc. And I didn't have any favorites because they're all good. Like they're all like I I I think I ranked all of them. I'll give some bias to Sem because their their song sounds like Gundam, and the the joke was they they named it Gundam Sem Destiny, which is sure I'll take that. But it's really good. All the songs in this CD are good, and seeing as how they're gonna take this direction to the other CDs, one CD is gonna have. Jupiter, uh, I think it's Jupiter, Bait, and Shinsoku Ikon. And then the other one is going to have Altissimo, uh, High Joker, and I think it's the Kogado. Uh, and I think that that's how they're going to they're going to give three units per CD. So these songs are really, 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 really good. Yeah, okay, it is Kogado. Um, yeah, t- yeah, t- um, T-H-E Kogado. Yeah, the Kogado. So I think this is... A really good format because uh, when when we oh, okay so Shinsuke already released there so um, when they released the song the, the song wrap up that we recently reached one thousand songs uh, a lot of people noticed that Side M is currently at one hundred yeah congrats one thousand songs hell yeah uh, they recently noticed that Side M was at one hundred and forty five and so they were looking forward to more and then we got more and g- judging by the preview that we currently have here on fourth disc. It's so good that I'm now looking forward to every unit now. Because if I can care mostly for the frame one, which sounds extremely good, and I'm even not that much of a frame P, I'm thinking like maybe this is the general quality of the entire thing. Because um, what we mostly figure out from Idol Master albums is if that when they take their time with them, it ends up being better. Like for example, Master Sparkle, the 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 in the general quality of Master Sparkle was really great. I think the same thing's gonna happen to this one. And if I can be mm-hmm. as like as enthusiastic for this C D where my only bias unit is like Sem, much more when they get to Altissimo or like Jupiter, which are my favorites. So I'm like I'm really excited. Which granted it is a slight issue that side M content takes so long to come out, but it is good to know that you know, when side M content does come out, it's usually a very high quality. So it's not like they're just twiddling their thumbs and just like doing nothing. They're working their best on to make sure like releasing every. It to ma- yes, like 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 it's it's like yeah, they're sacrificing quantity for quality. In that, yeah, things aren't going to come out super fast. But when it comes out, it's, it's going to hit good. you like a truck, man. It's like, speaking of hitting people like a truck, I'm going to have to dig into this one. Last month, they announced... Uh, hold on. Let me just go ahead and uh, bring up my announcement for this one because I had the full details here. Um, so it was known that recently, the voice actor for Tsukumo Kazuki had retired. And it's not because it's like something concerning Idol Master. It's not something concerning how Bamko was treating him. or No, you know, no. He, 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 he left, just wanted to take the next step in his career. He left because he has something else in mind for himself. So uh, the, the voice actor for Kazuki left, and now f Lags needed a new voice actor for Kazuki. And recently, or last year, or not exactly last year, at the end of... La, 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 yes. Yeah, at the end of January... Like, like, so at the end that we couldn't cover it. Yeah, we, can, we basically covered it here in the February one. They announced his new voice actor, who would be um, Shunya Hiruma. 
who voiced uh, one Tomoya Mashiro from Ensemble Stars. So he comes from Ensemble Stars, so that means he has some experience. He already has, he already knows the ways and in and outs of like being in a male idol series. So I think that's why, that's why they got him for it. That's why they picked someone with experience to carry on Kazuki's legacy. And Which I, is good. It's good. Uh, I think they chose him, and if I'm, I think that this is any, like, a way to help the Kazuki and F lag peas to, to, like, uh, lift their spirits up along with announcing Kazuki's uh, new voice actor they released Kazuki's latest Remember Shot Remember Shot is a series of side M cards where they take you back to the past where the boy was uh, you know previously going through what he was went through and you can see in the, in the Remember Shot card how uh, he's there with, his, with a book and he's writing and he's so happy and you see on the right his dad is giving him some head pants now I think in the commu, he doesn't mention his mom at all. And the Kazuki P's are now going crazy because they feel so sorry for him because he didn't mention his mom at all. And they're now thinking what happened to his mom. It's kind of like what's, what's currently going on with the Sakia uh, situation where Sakia never mentions her mom. So now that Kazuki's also doing yeah, it, we're now, and... we're now feeling the same thing towards Kazuki. And everyone likes this remember shot. And just as uh, Metal said... They may take time to make side M content, but when they actually do release side M content, it's like the best ever. And I think them releasing Kazuki's Remember Shot along after they announced like Shunya being the new Seiyu for Kazuki, I think it it was planned so that F Lag's piece won't feel too sad that they have to have someone new. And yeah, it, it just feels so. It's I, like it, I, the, the execution was great, right? I, I, yeah, at the very least, this was a very smooth transition that a lot of the community took well because, like, this is in contrast to what happened to like the last time an Idol Master character had to get a voice change, which was ten years ago with Yukiho. Like Yukiho, that wasn't really taken very well. But granted, the Yukiho situation was like a lot more severe than this one because yeah. yes, than this one. Like this one was simply just his old VA wanted to move on to a different career because like he he always wanted to be a radio show host. So he retired from voice acting to be a radio show host. Okay, that's fine. We the Yukiho the situation yeah. was yes, the Yukiho decision was a lot like dirtier, had like a lot of like scandals and death threats Malice and stuff, yeah. Yes, and malice and like the new the voice change just hit like a truck, and it doesn't help that it also came around the same time as like all the nine eighteen stuff. So that transition was not very smooth. But I am glad that this transition for Kazuki P's went a lot smoother. In that, well, for one thing, there was a lot more prior warning, yeah, and and we got to like know the voice actor a lot better. And yeah, it, it like it didn't feel like they had to sacrifice anything for this change. And it's not like you know, it's not like there was some some discord between Ensemble Stars fans and Side M fans. If anything, I actually caught wind of the Ensemble Stars guy saying, "Take care of Shunya for us. We hope he serves you well." General wholesomeness. It was really good. Aww. Yeah, it's really heart uh, heart well heart warming, heartfelt and stuff. And again, releasing the remember shot right after this happens, it's like. Mm. So good. It's a really great move. It's like if ever the it's like if ever something happens to the Seiyu in real life, I think releasing the remember shot right soon around the same time just, just amplifies the feeling that you get. So um, yeah. you know, props to the side end team. Again, uh it's really it's really surprising now that side MOBA is at a much better state than like what we discussed with CG MOBA because you know, latest CG MOBA content, that Kai card However, here on the latest side of mobile content, we got this amazing remember shot, and again, uh, the the hat on his head, the, the the hand on his head that coming from his dad, like oh man, so good, so good. I I can't stop talking about this card. So that's the side yeah. content. That's the side topic, and I think we're all done for the like the main topics that we have at the moment. If there's any like side content or side topics that you want to tackle before we close off the podcast, Cho Metal, maybe you could bring something up. Um, as far as I know, I think that's a lot of really what happened <clears throat> during February. Like, again, like, February was not a very eventful month, granted for very unfortunate reasons, but, like, yeah, this is, we, I think we pretty much just, like, covered the gamut for, oh, right, I forgot. There we go. Um, yeah, I forgot something. Um, on, I forget which magazine. But there is going to be a 54-page spread for Shiny Colors voice actresses. Ah, yes, yes, yes. 
Oh, and we also have to tackle like you know, shiny anniversary where they're gonna have a campaign soon. Uh, you know, it's a, it's the anniversary hype train. It's gonna start. Uh, yeah, rolling yeah, soon. Mi- yeah. Million Live just recently had its seventh anniversary for just the branch in general. Yeah, th- th- like 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 this would have been uh, seventh anniversary, but R.I.P. Grimas. Yeah. Um. So for shiny. Uh, again, there's the, the 54 page, 54 pages for how many seiyus, right? Like, does that mean every seiyu gets like four pages, something like that? Oh, sorry, it gets like three probably. pages. Probably. Yeah, I would say probably three, because like, okay, so you have the main 19, then of course you obviously have like, you know, your Pazuki, because I'm sure they'll probably have a feature page for it, and then probably for Amai, because why wouldn't they want to talk, talk about, about him? Kaiba. Why, why wouldn't you want to talk about him yeah. again, man? <laughs> Um, then again, like uh, shiny anniversary is soon. They're already releasing the the idea of uh, a, a pre a pre anniversary campaign. Okay, so it's only the idols. Okay, good. Um, so it's probably okay. Th- so it's still probably three pages each. Um, I, I mean, that, 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 that's still a lot for a new franchise. Yeah, it's still a lot. Um, again, uh, what? So when a year happens, the anniversary hype train starts with shiny colors because shiny colors is around like. April, if I believe, or is it, is it April? I think it was April. Yeah, April ish. So when Shiny Colors anniversary happens, it starts in April, then it ends somewhere around June, and then in June, that's when Million Live revs up, and then after that, when Million Live is done, it's a close packed anniversary period of original All Stars and Side M, and then once that's Mm -hmm. done, it's CG. So like when April hit, and, and 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 then right after Starlight Stage, see Starlight Stage is live on stage, and right after live on stage is CG Mobile Game or and, just CG in general. And after all that, we're gonna hopefully get Starlight Season release. Yay! So once April hits, the 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 momentum is gonna start a lot, and you know hopefully again pray, hope for the best that the coronavirus isn't at full swing by then, so that we can finally get the festivities going, something we've been waiting for years. And, you know, once April starts, we're going to slam on that gas pedal of Idol Master content, and we're going to be busier than ever on this podcast. Because, again, January was busy. February, not so much. But I swear to God, if things go well, the next coming months are going to be the busiest months ever. Because even for, like, even for like Million Live and, like, Side M, currently, I can already – like, because Side M will probably announce something on 315 Day – because uh, while they won't have the pro meet, they'll still announce something on three one five day. So um, there'll probably be a live stream yeah. or something. So uh, the content will only get more on more. Yeah, drama on stage. I do hope they feature like best game and like beast wars uh, because we've already had enough cybernetics wars. But you know, best game is pretty good. Um, and yeah, I, it's going to be a gigantic amount of momentum picking up ever since a- uh, starting April and March. So uh, while, yeah, while this. Yep edition of the uh, wrap up wasn't as eventful as january it's only going to get like more and more yeah though, though i will say like the the beginning parts of march will probably be a little bit of a lull period but once we get to the middle of the month that's when things are definitely going to start picking up yeah, because, sure. because it was it was kind of like that for um this month too yeah where like the beginning of the month was like a little bit of a lull period where there was really wasn't like a whole lot and granted, unfortunately, there wasn't a whole lot this month either because, again, the whole coronavirus outbreak. But there was a little bit more momentum, like, the middle of the end of the month. So who knows? Maybe March is going to be the same thing because we we don't know everything that's happening in March aside from what Million Live's doing. So... March, yeah. Uh, what are we expecting for, like, the other branches? What are we expecting for, like... Well, CG, has got, CG just got done with their concerts, so nothing much is going to pick up there because yeah, election, yeah. election period is like three months away. Yeah. Um, Shiny's probably going to be preparing for their know. anniversary. Yeah, their anniversary. So that's something to look forward to. Yeah, Shiny's going to do like campaigns and stuff. So uh, Side M has 315 day. That's the one day I'm looking forward to a lot. And then, yeah, March is going to be something to look forward to and the rest of the year. Now, there is also one other thing that is nice about this month. And it was brought up on the English Twitter, and I was thinking about including it, but I couldn't find a good time to use it. So, while it is not necessarily a technical uh, date, February 7th was a very important time in 2018. 
because that was when we got to learn about shiny colors for the first time. So, oh, yeah. oh right, that was, yeah, yeah, that, that, that was, the that was, first was big announcement. Announced, yeah, back in that original trailer where we saw illumination stars and the mm-hmm. silhouettes of everyone else. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wait, did they do something for that or no? I mean, like anniversary of an announcement stream. That's kind of a weird anniversary to have. Like, I, I mean, I mean, granted. 765 does that anyway for when the arcade game was announced. That was like how freaking like theater days came out and how Mirai's birthday was done. So it wouldn't, it would have surprised me if they did do it. Yeah, it's also the birthday of the Twitter, subreddit, Discord, and whatnot. So it's, it's a birthday yeah, of this place. Yeah, for the, right. yeah, for the English community. Yeah, pretty much. Yep, we've, we've been kicking it for two years. Had its ups and downs, but, you know, things are moving forward. Looking forward to seeing the game's second anniversary. I, I wonder... Now, this is something that we haven't done in a super long time. And I actually almost kind of wish we had it again. Uh, for those who are... I, I, I hate saying old heads for hey. Shiny when it's not even two OGs. years old. OGs. Hey. All right, OGs. For the OGs of Shiny... I wonder if we are going to get another, uh, how do I even call it, like, browser event? Oh, right. So, yeah, it's been a so while, So when right? Shiny, when, when, right before Shiny released, they announced this event that was going on for, what was it? It was like a month and a half or something like that, or two yeah. months? Um, so what, what would happen is that there was a special promotional website that you could go to to Shiny. And the idea was that you would get a roll every, like, was it hour? Yeah, you would. It, it yeah, was like either an hour year. or every two hours. And you'd have, like, X amount of charges of it. So you'd effectively get, like, uh, a, a good handful of pulls per day. Yeah. And the idea was that you were pulling essentially single rolls. And you were trying to get every single character. So at the time, it was like all of the initial yeah. SRs for every character, aside from Straylight, of course. And then it was the Illumination Stars SSRs. Yeah, and and, and also I think you you could also get the um the support Rs. Oh yeah, that's that's right. You could get the support Rs. So yeah. guess who was that guy who found who found Sakuya's first art? And I'm like, I'm gonna play this damn game. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of people. I definitely <laughs> remember me. Sakuya being a big reason why a lot of people played. But yeah, so- uh, Sakuya was like the big one for a lot of people. And then the game came out, and it's like, oh, Kogane and Chiyuki. Yeah, like, that's that's fair. Like, and I, what I was remember... nice about the uh, sorry, oh, ahead. sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> uh, the the nice part about this campaign was it wasn't just the fact that you were pulling. Uh, if, uh, well, if you were just doing it, you could pick one card to essentially be your favorite, and when the campaign was over and the game launched, you would get a, a DM on Twitter if you had it linked, uh, from yourself, which was really <laughs> weird, because I didn't actually realize that I got the message until, okay. like, a couple days later. Uh, you would get the code for the card that you picked, and you got a second code if you had gotten everybody, so it was this mad dash for everybody to try to get all the cards, you know, and me being pig-headed didn't realize I was getting a free SSR card and how good those would have been. I didn't even pick an Illumination Stars card for it, but, you know. I, I, yeah, I, 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 I was... I, p- I picked Sakuya. I mean, like, I knew I, 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 I knew I liked Sakuya. Actually, no, I, pick, I, actually, no, I picked Kogane. I, 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 I picked the Kogane one, but then in hindsight, it's like, I didn't pick an SSR. Granted, I eventually I got Meguru very early on, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Okay, funny yeah, story. and then I think the and then we had I think only one other instance of that gotcha game style, which was was that in the summer? No, was I want to like say the Christmas one where we had to guess right? There's no, because there was another one where instead of rolling for cards, you were rolling for puzzle pieces. Okay, yeah, for the oh, yeah, for the yeah. summer mono. I think they should and do then that there a was a th- then there was the secondary puzzle where it had the really cute art of like Hazuki training Illumination Stars, and then if you did it, you got like free Hazuki, which was nice. I think they should do that a lot more because like Shiny Coast yeah. is like the integrated like super duper browser game now, the most updated one. So they should they should kind of like give it 
its identity more as a browser game by doing more browser focused things. Like, well, maybe Gra- maybe they'll do it when they finally buy Enza. So, like, <laughs> yeah, gr- granted, like I feel like they did a lot of those early on to like help drum up interest and promote the game early on to to like see if they could get a big user base out of it. But yeah, I do agree. Like, they could do that more often because yeah, that kind of stuff's a lot of fun. It's identity. It's identity as a browser game and things that you do on browser uh, for updated engines. Uh, and like, I really, really like the whole Christmas thing where, you know, um, the guessing and stuff. Um, funny story. I only knew about Twitter DMs when I completed that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what Twitter DMs were. Like, I only so, thought so, you tweet. So what, so what you, like, I literally so what you're only think... So what you're saying is that... So what you're saying is that we couldn't slide into your DMs because no, you didn't even know what the fuck they were. I didn't even know what DMs were. I, like, I, 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 I only thought Twitter was for tweeting and replying to tweets with and checking out trends. And then when I was like, okay, guys, I completed the challenge. Where's my, where are my gems? I was like, oh, check your DMs. DMs. M- Direct messages. <laughs> and you're like, hello? Wait, on Twitter? What does that so, mean? I'm so like, so 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 what you're saying is that you're that guy that has a smartphone exclusively for calling and texting. Uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm, I, will, I will neither deny nor confirm that statement. <laughs> you've got you've got at least one Idol Master game on there. You're fine. Yeah, I got like four, whatever. <laughs> yeah, you have that, at least one. Campaign, uh, like all of them. <laughs> that campaign was so weird because, like I mentioned, uh, the the awkward part about it is that you didn't get a DM from the shiny colors like Twitter. You got a DM you got from a yourself. D- yeah, from yourself, and it doesn't <laughs> ping you for messaging yourself. So it's like I didn't even realize I had the code until I had hopped on. I think so, it was so, the Discord, and they were like, "Oh yeah, just check your check your GMs." And I was like, "Oh, there it is." How does that work? Oh, how do, how does another company get you to DM yourself? How does that work? Well, I... you well you agree to to when you start it. It says like, "Would you want Shiny to be able to access your data?" So it's essentially like doing a like a like temporary shared account status kind of deal yeah yeah it's it's like it's 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 like they essentially just like oh god this is going to sound very freaky and skynet ish but it's like they essentially just like take control of your account very momentarily and just send you the message as yourself that's freaking skynet man yeah (laughs) exactly yeah exactly it's like it sounds very terrifying but that's probably how it is yeah i think they should do and and like uh (laughs) I actually, like, in a way, wonder if some of the integrations that we haven't been seeing as much anymore are due to, like, weird platform changes. Like, there was one that happened last year. It might have been around this time, but it was right around the end of Enza doing Enza points. Oh, right. And and, and it was... Yeah, they just allowed us to use BAM BAM coins for everything. Well, it wasn't so much that. It was that... uh, during like a, I guess the sunsetting of Enza coins, uh, C or uh, not CG. What am I talking about? Shiny um, had this collaboration between Enza and Line, and so it was essentially if you had your Line account linked, or or rather, if your Line account was following Shiny Colors, then like every week you would get Enza point codes that you could then just have, and. Uh, I remember for a lot of people that were playing at the time, they did that for the sake of uh, using the Enza points to unlock the the Oshigoto slots. Yeah, I did that because now they're locked behind paid gems. I think that sucks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like that's 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 akin to like how side MOBA players always like find some way to maximize the free MOBA coins they always get. So it's like it's it's the same thing. It's same same energy. So I think we've covered most of what have to be t- talked about on February. Um, so as a wrap up, there was a gigantic thing that's going to prevent us from ha- from having most of the fun that we think that we thought we'd have. But we're, I, I, I've talked about other things that we could probably be excited for. And March, uh, when we when we when we ended the January podcast, we thought that February we we predicted that February is going to be less active, right? So, we we thought February was just going to be two hours of Riamu. Yeah, and like, you know, <laughs> who knows. But, well, while we were correct, we also have to be setting out a prediction that March... Yeah, my prediction is that March is going to be way more something like... Way a little more exciting than this one. 
if not like way more exciting than this one. So hope you guys stick around for the March podcast because there's again, uh, Million Life has Twin Stage coming up. We have 315 Day and maybe the other branches are going to surprise me too. Um, we'll, we'll probably see you there and, and until something happens, we're yeah, rest assured we're going to cover it as much as our ability because sometimes we forget things. I'm already being called old by literally every single person in this Discord, so I might forget <laughs> shit. So, old, old man. man. Old man. Up. Old man. Old man. So until we see you again on the March podcast, we're going to be signing out, me, Cho, and Metal, and we're going to see you soon. Thank you for stopping by.